So guys, we see a painting before us projected on screen. This outstanding work is by Manet, not Monet, but Manet, but they were contemporaries in France. Edouard Manet, interesting character. He was kind of a, um, he was a narcissist. You guys know what a narcissist is? Are you familiar with um, the, uh, the Greek character Narcissus? This uh, uh, character in Greek mythology, he was so beautiful, he was um, admired by men and women, everybody. And he happened to catch a, an image of himself in a reflecting pool, and he could not tear himself away. He couldn't, couldn't leave that image of himself. So he sat down by the water and kept looking at himself. He was narcissistic. And so he was eventually turned into a flower. That's Greek mythology. So. Manet, Edward Manet, was a narcissist of sorts. So let's take a look at this image we have up on screen here, and um, we'll explore some of the reasons why. I'm gonna take uh, the lights down so you can see a little bit more plainly. What do we see here, guys? What do y'all see? Okay, lights out, boom. What do you see here? A woman. What's this woman doing? She's at a bar. She's at not only a bar, but they are having a great time. This is like a, um, standard upper class in Paris in the 1880s, and they're having a big time. What do you see in this thing that indicates this, this bar is hopping? What's going on? What's going on in the background? There's a trapeze, exactly. There's, there's a, a, a woman's feet dangling, and the crowd is animated. There's people with binoculars. If you look closely, there's a, a, a lady holding like some, some um, glasses up to her eyes so she can see more clearly. They're binoculars. We see, actually, through a mirror. We're looking at a mirror. How do we know that? What's that? We see the back of her. This is actually a model. The model's name was Suzanne, or Suzanne. Suzanne, sorry, I'm going to turn the lights on. Suzanne, if you pronounce it in the, in the French way. This is Manet's friend, Suzanne. So we see her there at the bar. She is more than likely a barmaid. She is going to get you whatever you need. We see, um, we see some interesting themes. In um, that day and age, the, uh, the bar keeps the female barkeeps would also have a little on the side selling themselves to men. They would um, have that as a secondary source of income. So we see a guy in a top hat. Look at the reflection. We see a guy in a top hat who's really close to her. You see that? Can you guys see that? So it's thought that this individual, that's Manet's self-portrait. And he is, he is invading her physical space. He's really, really close to her. So what's going on with this reflection? Is this an accurate reflection of light? It looks like if you look at the left side, look at the left side of the uh, painting, there are some perfectly horizontal lines. There's um, some reflection of the bottles. What's going on with the bottles here, though? Can you see, can you see what's happening here? The bottles are in a couple different places. They should be positioned a little bit differently in the painting. So we look here, these bottles, they should be reflected in the painting, and they are. They're right there, but look at this. In this version, we're looking at the actual bottles here. They're at this edge of this marble countertop. The reflection, however, has them at the far edge of the bottle top. Now we don't know, there's a, a lot of ideas about why that's so, but I think maybe it's just a compositional thing. But maybe not, maybe not. Look at these bottles here. This label, it's a, a beer label, and we see things that you can purchase here. Purchase this brand of beer, red triangle beer, whatever it's called. There's a red triangle here. You purchase that. Purchase an orange. Notice how perfectly everything is. 
the modern sensibility, the traditional sensibility of it, perfect still life. Here's flowers, here is um, some oranges, perfectly clean vase. Here's more bottles. Here's another bottle of that red triangle beer, whatever brand it was. Now this is Echo, and I'm gonna turn the uh, I'm gonna turn the lights off so you guys can see this. This is Echo, and it kind of uh, says, okay, consumerism is going on here, but you can buy more than just the beer and the oranges. So let me turn this off so you can see. Red triangle. Red triangle. Do you see anything else that shows another thing that has a red triangle that might be for sale? It's kind of a uh, subliminal, kind of triangle shape. Do you see anything? What about right here? See how that's kind of a triangle? So is this like a subliminal message that Manet is giving us? Let me flip the lights back on. Three, two, one, please. Is it like a uh, subliminal message that Manet is giving us? This female is for sale. Does it give us an indication of what she is? Maybe. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. We don't know. There's so many things in uh, in the uh, traditional study of art history. You can go down many, many avenues. Many, many avenues. We don't know exactly why um, Manet painted this. Oftentimes, painters would paint their work, display it, and they don't have to offer up any explanation. And Manet really did not for this. So we see the uh, the face. Can y'all see the face of this young lady, mm -hmm. Suzanne? Let me get in there a little bit closer. There you see the triangle, the red triangle. Look at her face. So, as all the actions happening, happiness all around, ladies on a trapeze, frivolity, this bar is packed. It is indicative of 1880s, fun times in the upper class in Paris. Is this Suzanne character having fun? No. 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 Well, she's in a big bar, it's loud, it's noisy, everybody's having fun. Why is she not having fun? So she has been described as um, somebody with the joy draining from her body, as you see her. So who knows, maybe she is, um, she's working a double shift, maybe she's exhausted, maybe she's tired. Maybe she um, needs to go home, she's exhausted. Maybe she's reacting to the character that we saw on the right there a moment ago. We'll spread it out here in just a second so you can see it again. But maybe she's reacting to the person that is right in her personal space. The, uh, the character that's painted there is thought to be Manet again, thought to be Manet. And um, it might be a reaction to that. Maybe she's being propositioned Maybe she is emotionless because, yeah, she's going to take her up. She is going to take him up on something um, joyless, but she needs the money. She, uh, she's uh, ambiguous. We don't really know what's going on. So that is the uh, character that Suzanne modeled for Manet. So it uh, um, symbolizes, we saw like the, uh, the subliminal triangle there. And we saw the, the beer and the wine and, and the oranges and everything else. It symbolizes the commodity of women in the 1880s. Now, um, Manet was buddies with this writer, this poem writer named Baudelaire. Baudelaire. And Baudelaire encouraged Manet to paint modern society, paint what you know. No sense in painting what's gone on before, paint modern society. And um, he did so. Uh, Manet often painted things like uh, um, this grass, this uh, picnic in the grass that kind of mimicked 
the creation of Adam. The creation of Adam. So it kind of mimicked that. And so um, he also mimics some things in this thing as well. So it's a very, very interesting painting. It shows modern society at the time, 1880s. It shows the traditional arrangement of uh, the still life. It shows the uh, um, commodity that is being um, illustrated uh, by the, the model here. She's uh, something to be bought. And matter of fact, Manet died from a uh, disease that uh, he got from a prostitute. So he, he did uh, partake in, in such things. So guys, the, uh, the, the prim and proper view of uh, the barkeep, she's dressed rather well. She's got that subliminal triangle on her. She's a commodity. But um, she kind of represents um, what is known and uh, dressing well for modern society. Whereas in the background, we have um, the crowd. You can almost hear the crowd. It's very, very noisy in there. And it uh, um, represents hedonism and um, that type of thing. The 1880s in Paris, everybody was going wild. Everything was good. And uh, they were not afraid, afraid to spend money to have a good time. So what we're going to do now is we will um, fire up Quizlet. And um, so if you would aim your phones at the QR code right here on the board and um, click on that. And I'm going to pass out a piece of paper. So we're going to do this kind of a hybrid way. I'm going to pass out a piece of paper on which you will write the answer to the question that you're going to see in this quiz list. Okay, so let me pass this out. What is this painting painted in? What type of, what type of medium? It's oil. It is oil. Okay, guys, if you're done with the uh, quiz, if you've written down the, uh, the answer to that mind-bending question, we're, uh, we're good. We're in good shape. So um, let's talk a little bit more about Suzanne. And I will uh, pull back out so you can see exactly what's going on here. So Marcel Duchamp was a Dadaist. He kind of rose just as World War I was um, creating um, havoc in Europe. He, he came to, uh, to help found the, the Dada's movement. And um, one of his more interesting pieces was called Nude Descending a Staircase. And um, what this looks like is just an assemblage of wooden sticks. It's a painting, but it, it looks like an assemblage of wooden sticks of like a um, time lapse of a new descending a staircase. And if you look at it, yeah, okay. You can imagine what that might look like. So um, there's some theory that what Mene is doing here is he's talking about time. So we see like one pose of Suzanne here. And then if you look to the right, perhaps she is then confronted by this man in the top hat, which we think is Mene. And um, it's an instance of time expressed in a static painting. So we see Suzanne, then maybe moments later, she is confronted by this gentleman who would like to pay her for her services. So that's another um, interesting twist. And again, we don't know exactly what's going on. That's part of the fun of art. It's fun to uh, um, come up with some ideas about exactly what might happen. So guys, how was lunch? Was lunch good? Did anybody bring me anything? Some form of some form of sustenance. Another. So guys, let's talk about this review. What we know about this painting by Edouard Manet. You know that the uh, the barmaid's demeanor is something like the Mona Lisa. You guys know a little bit about the Mona Lisa. We don't really know if she's smiling or what's going on with it. Very much the same way with uh, this character here. This is uh, Suzanne. This model was um, a friend of Manet's. He had her pose and painted her. But she's got this really interesting 
envisioned of her of her face. You don't know if she's um, tired, if all the joy is draining out of her, even as everybody's just having a big old time as reflected in the mirror. We don't know exactly what's going on. But we know that, man, they wanted her to be some sort of a commodity because we got like the labels of the, uh, the wine and the beer, that um, triangular red shape on the bottom of the beer there on the right and there on the left, and then hanging down across her midsection there, she's a commodity. Now, we might be experiencing some, um, some time-lapse experimentation on the part of Man A, couple of decades um, before it ever happened during the, uh, the Dada movement. We might have the front view here, and the moments later, she is approached by somebody in a top hat. She might be approached by somebody in a top hat. And uh, she know, we know that she is a commodity. Who knows if that's a proposition or what's going on? We do know that that is a self-portrait of the narcissistic Edouard Manet. So we even have, and you can't see it, you probably can't see it from where you are, but we have like a double self-portrait. Here's Manet, the man in the top hat, and then right here, if you ever look this up, he's right here as well. And incidentally, this lady with the, uh, the glasses here, this is kind of like a, a, an homage to Mary Cassatt. She painted something very much like that. So there's a little bit of homage going on here, a couple different ways. Interesting thing about uh, Suzanne, the barmaid here, it's thought that by art historians that she is showing like palms up as she's lean, leaning against the marble there. There's very much like a couple of renditions of the Virgin Mary. So maybe here in this view, in the reality view, as we actually see her, not a reflection, maybe she's like the virgin. And then maybe in the second view, you see her backside there in the, uh, in the mirror reflection, if you see the back of her, maybe um, there she is the prostitute. So we don't know. This is what makes um, art history so interesting and so fun to explore it a bunch of different ways. What's that, is there a question? Is everybody good? So um, she's passive, yet attentive posture. It's emblematic also of um, the uh, subjugated role of women who are now seen. It's a subjugated role of women. They are, um, at this time in Paris, they're second class citizens. And uh, we know that the narcissist, Edouard Manet, is gonna take full advantage of that and make sure that she uh, knows where her place is. So, Symbolism and allegory. We got the demeanor of the barmaid. We got the uh, reflection symbolizing appearance and reality. So the, the background, maybe the reflection is more like appearance and the foreground is reality. She's bored out of her skull. She is a commodity and she knows it. Um, and yet she will get you whatever you need, <clears throat> including herself in this painting. The social dynamics, we talked a little bit about the gender roles. She, um, she is a second class citizen because she is female, and this again is 1880s Paris, France. That's how it worked then. We know that Manet, we know that Manet is a narcissist. We see a double self portrait in this thing. We got the man in the hat, that's Manet. We see uh, the man in the hat, once again, to the left. He's kind of showing off as well with all of his um, art skills. He wants you to notice how good he is. We've got some things going on that we really don't know what's happening here, like the, the placement of the wine bottles. They're kind of toward the back edge of the, uh, the marble bar in reality. And then the reflection, they're on the other side of that marble. So who knows what's going on there? I think it's mainly a compositional thing. That's my thought. So. Guys, let me ask you a question. Get out a uh, piece of paper. We have what's called an exit ticket. You have to answer this question properly to get out of this room. So get out a piece of paper and answer me this question about this. Outside. 
Outstanding work of art by Edward Manet. Not to be confused again, not to be confused with Monet, Claude Monet, the water lilies guy. So did Manet. So here's the question. Are you ready? The question on your exit ticket in order to get out of this room. Hopefully you can do this before spring break. You're stuck here. Here's a question, guys. Ready? Hey, you quiet. 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 How might Edward Manet's artistic choices and composition techniques in a bar at the Folies Berger, this painting here, how might that composition reflect his personal perspective and manifestations of narcissism within the painting? So take about 10 minutes to think about that. Write a couple paragraphs. Here's the question again. You're quiet. You're quiet, guys. Here it is. Ready? How might Edward Manet's artistic choices and composition techniques in a bar at the Folies Berger reflect his personal perspective and manifestations of narcissism within the painting? That's what we just talked about. That's what we just talked about. Narcissism. It's interesting. Manet might have been painting a prostitute here. And um, he was known to indulge, so that's why, interestingly, that's why he passed away, because he got a disease in that manner. So, go ahead and write up what you think. Give me a couple answers. Give me a couple ideas. Then we'll go from there. 